Hey guys! Hey look everybody! Joey is back! Yeah! Welcome back to the show called Joey Answers Your Questions, the show. I hope you've been well. It's been a long time. In fact, it's been since May 2021 Wrong. since I've made an episode of Joey Answers Your Questions, the show. Isn't that insane? Well, I'm excited to get back to it. I will definitely be a little bit rusty, but that's okay. We make do and... How do I answer your questions if there's been no episodes of Joey Answers Your Questions, the show to pull questions from? Well, I'm gonna go back all the way to POV, You Interrupt Me Eating a Muffin, uh, which was posted on November 15th, 2021. It's been since May, 2021. I'm gonna pull questions from that and uh, hopefully we can get some good answers. And if you have anything pressing you want to ask me, Write them in the comment section down below right now because we're starting this up again. I decided that, you know what? This brought a lot of joy to my life. I really liked just filming these episodes, being real with you guys, just chilling with you, answering your questions, having a little bit of silly memory, maybe reacting to some stuff. And I figured it'd be a cool opportunity as well to kind of bolster the second channel and do some more fun stuff, different stuff maybe cooking videos, even though I'm a terrible cook. Maybe we do some house tour. Maybe we do some, you know, TikTok reacts, movie reviews. You know, let me know what you wanna see. And maybe the best comment will be the next video. So let me know in the comment section below. Good to see you guys, welcome back. So the first question we are going to answer comes from Yanni Marku. Says, do you have any tips on how to feel better day to day? How do you feel good throughout the day? Well, how do you feel right now? Do you feel good? Do you feel bad? Do you feel anxious or stressed? And why is that? What have you been up to? When you do something that you don't like, you know, when you do something that you want to stop doing, the part of you that feels more like your authentic identity is telling you that this activity isn't good. It's not, it doesn't make you feel good and you want to stop doing it. You wanna phase it out of your life. Well, why is that? Why do you wanna phase it out of your life? Is it because it gives you a bad feeling? You know, after you've done it? Reflect on that. How does that make you feel? You know, feel that feeling. I'm feeling. <laughs> Say you just played this video game called Rust for six hours straight. After you do that, how do you feel about yourself? And I would imagine if you've played Rust before, it's not a good feeling, right? You probably feel very like drained. You don't feel human. You feel low energy. Your brain feels zapped. That's the reason why you want to stop. It's because that feeling sucks. So it's like, okay, where's the disconnect here? Why do I do it? Well, it's because of a lack of communication between this higher identity, your more authentic self present in your prefrontal cortex and your more primal basal ganglia reptilian self that only sees things in the short term. Your reptilian mind only wants to feel good. The key is to communicate with this reptilian self with this brain stem, this motivation system that's not very smart. And not to say, no, you dumb dumb. Playing Rust won't make you feel good, you idiot. Because we do that enough to ourselves and it doesn't really work because we don't offer a compelling alternative. But the key is to be fully honest and fully accurate with how Rust makes you feel, how this bad activity makes you feel. Reflect on that and, and really feel the truth that this solution that you're used to doing doesn't actually solve the problem of feeling bad. It actually makes it worse or it introduces new problems. Even the reptilian self can understand this if you communicate with it. It's like, yeah, you feel bad, ooga booga, bad, bad feeling, I feel bad, I wanna feel good, I wanna do this thing. Hey, listen, I get it but this thing actually makes you feel, remember? Remember all, this times we, all these times we've done this? It actually makes you feel like this when you do that. Like every single time. Ooga booga, I understand. Let's try to not feel bad anymore, but let's do something else instead. Let's do something that might actually solve this problem of feeling bad. 
Ooga booga. And just by that line of communication and getting very good at communicating with yourself and this dumb, dumb version of you, Ooga booga. this emotional self, you know, the primal self, then your decisions start to make a lot more sense. You start to realize that your reptilian mind, it actually wants the best for you but its methods of getting there is just based on what you've repeatedly done, whether or not it actually works that well. Because it might temporarily work, but it's short-sighted. So going back to the question, do you have any tips on how to feel better day to day? Well, it's do things that make you feel good. <laughs> like it's such a, it's a simple question and it's a simple answer, but there's so much complexity behind these very simple on the surface things. So that's what I'm starting to discover in my own life is like just bringing awareness to how certain things make you feel in their wholeness gives clarity to what things are actually valuable to your life. Does that make sense? And when that line of communication is broken, then there can be sort of that split mind problem where your reptilian mind runs amok and does things that make you feel bad and your moralistic self is like, why are you doing that? I don't get it, it's stupid. Like, why don't you just do as you're told? Why don't you be a good person? Why don't you just like not be bad? And it's like, well, I'm trying to not feel bad all the time. So it's like, do you have any solutions? Do you have any anything that would satisfy my emotional self and moral self? Because if you don't have a game plan, I'm just gonna do what I've always done. It's like synergize these two aspects of yourself and create compelling alternatives that are both emotionally satisfying and morally satisfying. And you might find that life is just easier that way. It feels better to be you day to day. And what you'll also find is you feel more you when you make decisions based on this integration or this integrated self. You will feel more like you. It's hard to explain because it is a feeling, but you will feel like you have a more unified identity. You won't feel like 16 different people. You will feel like yourself. And that's what confidence is. Confidence is just like feeling like you and liking that feeling of being you without compromise. That was my stomach. I don't know if you heard that, but I'm starving. I haven't eaten today and it's 3 p.m. Part of that is intentional intermittent fasting. The other part of that is neglect of my own self-worth as I give you strategies on how to increase it. I'm not perfect. But yeah, the real reason is I ate, I ate fried chicken late last night and I, uh, I woke up in the middle of the night kind of sick. So I'm like kind of turned off of food for a little bit. I'm just kind of like cleansing my body through fasting for a bit and um, I think it's working out well for me right now. But I am starving and I'm going to eat directly after this. I will eat until the cows come home. I'll eat my neighbors. I'll eat your ass. Mercenary says, man, your editor is fucking <laughs> hilarious. I know. Uh, it's not a question though. I'm only here for the questions. Thanks. Thanks for nothing. You're welcome. Tyree White says, are you a prodigious accumulator of wealth? I think that's a Millionaire Next Door reference. And I would say I'm kind of half and half. After reading The Millionaire Next Door, I really realized I have to play better financial defense. Not gonna lie, I'm pretty good at playing financial offense. It's not difficult for me to make money. I've always been pretty good at like figuring out a way to acquire money, but I lose it super quick, right? I like to buy things. And I have a serious case of consu consumer? Retail therapy. I'm getting better at that. I'm getting better at that as I uh, go on throughout this thing called life. I'm realizing that buying things is a short-term high. You can buy some things that bring you a lot of happiness. Let me just say. See, I just said that and I don't know if I actually believe that fully. I just want it to be controversial or like say something different because I, do, I don't want to say stuff like money can't buy you happiness because everyone says that. So in an attempt to be different, I said, you know what? There are some things you can buy that make you genuinely happy but I said that without having any specific examples loaded up. Um, and then I thought I could think of some examples on the fly, uh, but I couldn't. Some things can buy you genuine happiness, but it's because those things are a medium or a tool that you use to do an activity that enhances your life, not necessarily because the thing itself is giving you happiness or fulfillment. A good example of this is like this camera I'm currently looking at. 
$7,000 camera. Wow! At least. Um, and I have all these nice lenses and stuff like that. Do I really need those nice lenses? And do, do I look at that lens on the shelf and I'm filled with happiness? Not a chance. Like when I click pay, check out, submit payment or whatever, at the checkout online, I am filmed with this sort of short-term dopaminergic surprise, but that is short-lived. And it's what I do with it and how I use it that brings me genuine happiness or despair. Because a lot of the time I'll buy expensive things that I don't actually end up using. And every time I look at it, it's a reminder that I wasted a lot of money. So it's like, yeah, that's that's what it's like. Okay, moving on. Comert. She says, how to girlfriend, quick guide, please. Cry face, f self development. I'm fit, handsome to some level. Social. I don't have the problems of League of Legends players, but I really don't know <laughs> how to flirt or make her your girlfriend. Tell me how this works. I just say them that I like her slash interested in her. Get rejected eventually, turn to my bed, cry, smoke a cigarette, and give up. Holy shit. It sounds like you are fit. It sounds like you're handsome to some level. And social. You don't have the problems of League of Legends players. You don't know how to flirt or make her your girlfriend. You say that I like her slash interested in her. That's not enough. That's just like, that's words. Wonderful weather we're having. Yeah, I, I like you, I'm, a, I'm attracted to you. That's not flirting. There has to be this sort of like, sexual tension. hey, let's make this happen. I'm just reading words, right? I don't know you, but if I was to diagnose this based on just this message, it sounds like you're guarded, right? Maybe you've been hurt in the past or, you know, maybe you're weary from getting rejected. So you just want to like guard yourself, be matter of fact and be like, you know, be around this person and then show no signs of this like, charisma or sexual tension and then just say words like, hey, I'm interested in you. It's like, well, you're gonna get rejected because that's kind of blindsiding me. I had no, I couldn't tell. There was no indicators that you were interested. There was no invitation to, you know, see whether there's flirtation compatibility there, you know? And that just comes from like guarding your, your intentions. You're not communicating your attraction on a subconscious level. So if you're attracted to somebody and you try to conceal that, you're gonna come across as shady. Far shadier than if you're just upfront with your attraction, because then you get acute rejection. They say like, yeah, sorry, I'm not about that. And that's fine. But then what happens is you get rejected by the people who aren't interested and you get accepted by the people who are. But if you always withhold, then it's always a guessing game and no one's ever gonna reciprocate because they can't tell that you're flirting or interested ever. So when you do say, hey, I like you, they're blindsided by it because you actually never expressed via the tone of your voice, your body language, that you were ever attracted in the first place. So it's just gonna be rejection after rejection because people are confused. Don't be confusing, be upfront. I'm not talking about being like insanely forward and overbearing, right? I'm talking about being honest. And if like the fringe, you know, blue haired third wave feminist type people want to be offended by, you know, just honest communication, you know, most people aren't going to be, most people want that, then so be it. Let people say like, oh, are you coming on to me? Gross, what am I supposed to do, right? By your words and your body language, clarity helps everybody. But just be honest, take risks, not physical risks, but emotional risks, express yourself honestly. And then people can kind of pick up what you're putting down, if you know what I mean. The Moon Show says, Hi Joey, thank you so much for your amazing content. I truly appreciate it. Well, I appreciate you, Moon Show. The Moon Show, all caps. I would love to know, please how do you schedule your day or week? Because I am honestly struggling on being consistent. I tried apps and to have a notebook, but I still couldn't get into the habit of scheduling my day-to-day -day routine. Thanks. I don't really have a concrete schedule for my day-to-day -day things. Um, I probably need to be better at that. But one thing that I've noticed, at least in my own life, is to not overcomplicate it. 
find out, say like day-to-day -day routine, if you have a morning routine, try to figure out what like one or two things really make a difference that are the non-negotiables. Um, same thing with like throughout the day. Is going to the gym important to you? Make it a non-negotiable. You don't need 13 other things that you have to like line up, but it's like, okay, reflect on what doing that activity um, would do for you, how it would make you feel about yourself and your life and do it. <laughs> Communicate with yourself and just pick the best bang for buck things you can possibly do and make them non-negotiable and develop a track record of doing those very few things and be consistent because as you're consistent, you'll develop a track record, a subconscious track record of being the type of person who sticks to those things. And you start to develop this firm foundation that you can build other habits on. But unless you have that foundation, it's really hard to, you know, make anything stick. I'm seeing this concept make its rounds on YouTube and I'm a huge fan of it. I was gonna do a whole video on it. I think Captain Sinbad did one and then I wanted to, I saw this other video earlier. Anyways, the, the concept is basically like doing the basics will get you 80% of the results or 90% of the results. It's a different percentage every time. But I think it's so true because like the times where I've been the most physically built in my life, like I've been going to the gym, um, and I had the most muscle, it's probably when I was going to the gym like the least amount of times per week, but consistently and eating well consistently. Like I ate like probably four things and I went to the gym four times a week. But I, those things were like eggs, potatoes, rice, protein powder, and chicken, right? So like some big hefty carbs, proteins, fats. And I just showed up to the gym four times a week, every single week for months and months and months and months and months. That's all you need to do. You can get jacked on five exercises. You only need to do five. Like you do a squat, a deadlift, a bench press variant, an overhead press, and like either weight, like weighted pull-ups and or rows. So that's like six. But if you got strong on just those exercises, that's it. You can build the greatest body of your life. You know, you can become an absolute mammoth of a human being on just those six exercises. Everything in life is the exact same way. You know, there's the Pareto distribution is present in nature. That's like the 80-20 rule where 20% of what you typically do yields 80% of the results or of your desired results terrible way to say it. But just look up Pareto distribution and it's uh, it's pretty wild. Use it to your advantage. Okay guys, I'm gonna wrap this up. Follow the Instagram, at better ideas. Also, I didn't mention this. The merch is available for a limited time. The inaction is a slow death merch. And as per usual, you guys, you know, you lucky few who are watching the second channel, get an exclusive coupon code that I'm not offering anywhere else. And that is the coupon code Real ones 10. So if you use Real ones 10 at checkout, you get 10% off your purchase. You know what's funny is if you're an international person watching this, we already kind of break even or lose money every time you buy one. So if you use that coupon code, we just straight up lose money. But we wanted to keep the materials of the merchandise super premium. Even for those um, of you who are overseas, we didn't want to compromise on quality just because, you know, there's extra shipping costs involved. Use the uh, the coupon code REALONES10 uh, to uh, save 10% off your order. And um, I need to eat something. I'm dying and um, I'm the brain fog is starting to come on and I need to, uh, I need to take care of myself and eat food to sustain my musculature and brain and life. Thanks for watching. Catch you in the next one. Also comment below, comment right now. Anything you wanna ask me for the next one? Any videos, idea, videos ideas, any videos ideas <laughs> that you want to see? Um, do you want me to react to a movie? What's your favorite movie? I could film an entire reaction video and and like react to your favorite movie and do a review. I'm a huge film guy. Let me know what you want to see in the next video. Have a great day. Ooga booga.